Hi there, everyone, and welcome to uh, Learning to Art Journal, Phase 1. Um, this is a series of um, classes that I will be doing, and this is just an introductory level of the process of how we'll be art journaling together. So what I thought I'd do is I, would sh I was going to show you a little bit of what I've done, my finished product, if you will, the first couple years that I was doing art journaling, um, because I have done the more elaborate art journals that you might have seen online where people are painting figures and doing watercolors and adding words and uh, scrapbook pages and that sort of thing so I have done that before but because as I mentioned in the introduction of uh, the video to invite you into this uh, class I at the beginning was so intimidated by all of those different um, options if you will to do something like this that I never really started and it wasn't until I decided to just keep it as simple as possible, that I really started to enjoy it. And actually, this still is my favorite way to art journal. So throughout this class, you'll also see me um, art journaling in real time with you so that you can kind of experience the, the same things that I experience and vice versa. And you know that, yes, I, I do understand that sometimes it can feel a little bit intimidating and some days will flow a little easier than others. But it's a practice just like really when you think about it, everything in life, right? Okay, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you, for example, this is some samples of my art journal pages. Now, this is um, a book. Um, I'll show you the brand. It is a Strathmore Recycling Drawing Paper, um, and it's a 9 by 12 inch. Now, for me, I don't always go this large. Sometimes I'll go super small, even notebook, steno pad, because I really don't want to overwhelm myself with what it is that I want to accomplish. So here's another size that might be something to take a look at, 7 inch by 10 inch. But again, you can simply staple together some copy paper because where you're going to start to um, thrive is in the pictures that you've downloaded and in the um, the quotes that you've downloaded. So let me kind of break down what you see. So what you see here is um, this is actually some of my mixed media paintings that I've done. So I, I have a series of this as well that I will do in the next uh, class. But what I did is I took a picture and then I took a quote and as you can see I got um, I added a little more color and variety by having washi tape which this is washi tape you can find it pretty much anywhere different colors actually you can get very pretty cheap actually um, so that might be something to add but again not something that's a requirement for this class because as you could see you could just pick a picture tape it on with regular scotch tape you could use um, any sort of duct tape you could just glue the back of it so it's up to you so what I did is I and as I'm asking you to do is you're going to pick one of the pictures that you get in your download for the week you're also going to pick one of the quotes this uh, week one's quotes are going to be all around journey and then down here you can decide to write about it either writing about the picture you chose or write about the quote you picked or just basically write about what you're feeling on this particular day because I promise you when you go back later because at the end of this course you'll have 30 pages like this and you look at that um, that first page the second page even though it might feel a little hesitant to you what you're gonna find is there's something you've captured just by choosing this particular picture and this particular quote and putting them together and I'm really excited about that for you because, again, going back to expanding this idea of what creativity means. Creativity is just about discernment, choice, uh, why you make a, a particular decision in this point in time as, as opposed to another point in time in your life. And when you look at these pages, I hope what you see is if you have never considered yourself to be creative, that you start to see that the process is, it does have mystery to it, there's no doubt about it. But really, it's a matter of putting a practice together 
and crafting it in a way that feels comfortable and inviting for you. So again, this is just the introduction of an example of what I'm doing here and how this class came together. And what I want you to do is go ahead and figure out what kind of paper, what kind of journal you're going to use, gather all your supplies, print off your PDFs, and I will see you back here in class very soon. All right, welcome back. And I hope that you have got your journaling system set up. Again, as I mentioned in the introduction, all of what you can use for your art journaling journey can actually fit into a pencil pouch. And so if you were to print off all of the quotes and then cut them into strips that can be folded, you know, you can even have a crinkle effect on your on your uh, quotes by just crumpling them up, which is a nice idea, it gives you a little bit of interest. Um, doesn't have to look and feel so sterile, right? Gets it kind of an artsy look. Um, if you wanted to, you could even um, very lightly paint over it with watercolor paint and let them dry. You don't want to smear your, um, your ink, but there are lots of different ways to, again, create this and make it your own. And the same thing with your pictures. So what you've probably noticed on the downloads is some of them I've kept at four by six. Some of them I've um, formatted into squares, rectangles, just all different kinds of sizes and shapes. And what I'm hoping is that when you're looking at those pictures, you're not feeling so attached necessarily to um, the format that you don't feel like you can't cut it up and change it. So like, for example, you could put the quote up at the top or you could put the picture on the side and cut up the journal, uh, the quote, so that it's right next to um, your um, picture. So again, like I said, I think the first week we're just slowly delving in. You wanna do it just kind of in the way that it's been structured, but I want you to always feel free to move it into a different direction if you're feeling compelled to try it, right? And the beauty about getting a PDF, right, is if something, you don't cut it you know, the way you want or you feel like, oh, I shouldn't have cut that picture or that quote in that way, you just print it off. <laughs> so that's the great part about just having this accessible for you to print off at any time. So what I wanted to do today is I wanted to talk about um, if you wanted to add more of the writing to this component for your art journal. So um, let's say, for example, you want to maybe get into a little bit of essay writing or more personal journal writing along with your quote and your picture, I wanted to um, give you 10 daily habits of what um, can help you to develop a writing practice. Now again, this can be applied to writers, but it also can be just applied to you as a beginning art journaler or as someone who's just trying a new way to be creative. So here are the 10 steps. So let, I, I want to start with a quote. Um, it says, um, it's by um, Kate Braverman and she says you have to give away your TV you have to read aloud three excuse me two hours a day minimum you have to walk in the hills alone and you have to always carry a notebook now that's ideal <laughs> right um, I'm I'm gonna be honest I love a good Netflix binge watching session so we don't have to necessarily go to that extreme uh, to art journal or to write, but I do like the idea of just pushing into a little bit more. Um, like for example, I have appreciated yoga, let's say that. I actually went so far as to be certified as a yoga instructor and I am able to teach level one yoga, um, but what was happening is, and very much this could happen with creativity, right? Um, you get so like stuck in how you envision it's going to be that you never really start, right? But um, what I decided one day coming across 
uh, a yoga channel on YouTube, Yoga with Cassandra. I'll put that in the notes. Um, she has these um, 10 minute yoga classes, 15 minute, all the way up to 90 minutes. But 10 minutes, can I do 10 minutes? <laughs> yes, I can. And so about a month ago, I just decided when I wake up, I'm just going to get the bat out and I'm just going to do it. And um, yeah, it's made all the difference to go from zero time to yo to do yoga to 10 minutes of yoga every day. It really is just about the consistency, right? Because we get stuck in our head if we can't do it, you know, you know, exactly the way we want, we just never start. And so that's why this is so good, the way you're getting into art journaling. And especially if you've done something like this before, and maybe you maybe even did it when you were younger, or you had more time, and then you just start thinking, well, if I can't pull out all the art supplies, and I can't, then I'm not going to do it. And it's just not true. You really can get some real deep fulfillment and satisfaction by just doing it a few minutes a day. I promise. So anyway, let's talk about those 10 habits to uh, make a good writer. But of course, we can adapt it to being a good art journaler or even just a person with a creative practice, right? So number one, believe it or not, is eat healthfully. So it says, and this is from a book titled The Writer's Book of Days by Judy Reeves. And I love this book because it gives you um, a... Um, journal prompt a day. So I'll also link this in the notes down below. But what she says is give your body what it really wants so it can support you. You may think it wants caffeine, sugar, alcohol, but what it really wants is broccoli and spinach. Eat healthfully for stamina, good health, and the sensory experience of it. Notice your carrots when you eat them, their color and crunch. Smell the onion. Look closely as, at its layers and its textures. Eat several small meals throughout the day and begin with a good breakfast. Here's number two. Be physical. Remember when your mother warned you about making faces, your face could freeze that way? If you're sitting at your desk all hours of the day and night, your whole body will petrify that way. <laughs> Move it, stretch, exercise, work out breathe. How many times have we heard that? Breathe. It roils the blood and it feeds the brain. When you ro walk, run, bicycle, or swim, you're in touch with the earth, unless you do it in a gym. In that case, get outside. <laughs> do it alone so you can pay attention to your body and notice your environment as you glide along. So again, going back to that example with yoga, the idea is not necessarily that you have to do all the things all the time, but you could do a little bit of it all the time, like noticing what you're eating a certain day, you know, a certain time of day, like lunch, let's say. Um, bonus, if you also do your art journaling at lunch, right? <laughs> Being physical, same thing. I'm taking my yoga practice. I'm acknowledging that I know that the older I get, I need to continue to work on that flexibility. So 10 minutes seems doable. Uh, no matter how much I tried, 30 minutes wasn't coming, but 10 minutes has been coming a lot easier than 30 mi minutes ever could. All right, let me offer two more. Uh, laugh out loud. Do you love it? You take uh, big breaths when you laugh out loud, and laughing helps rid the body of toxins. So lighten up. Take a breath from work and play with your puppy or your child or your neighbor's child. Look at cartoons, tell a joke, share with friends, find something funny in the world and let loose belly laughs and create a playground for the muse. All right, so let's try that right now. Let's do a little bit of a laughing exercise. So I would say wherever you're sitting, we're just gonna find a comfortable space, right? <laughs> As if we were doing a yoga class where we're gonna laugh instead. Go ahead and just take a moment. And maybe you're in a place you can't laugh with me. That's fine. <laughs> I think I always find it kind of interesting that I actually get joy from hearing other people laugh, right? Do you ever feel a little self-conscious when you laugh? I'm starting to feel that a little bit now. All right, here we go. <laughs> Oh. <sighs> 
Let's do that again. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Just a few minutes time, just sitting. And it all comes back to this thing called intentional, right? Um, I know there are times when I, if I'm not careful, I can go through a whole day and not laugh. And I'm going to look this up. I'll share this with you, I'm sure, on, a, um, on one of the, I'll put an article in the notes um, about this idea of how many times a child laughs during the day and how many times an adult laughs during the day. And I actually have seen this firsthand because I am an art teacher and I am a preschool teacher from time to time. I do stints as a preschool teacher. And, um, oh man, most kids have an easy time laughing. But then when you ask an adult to do it, you might get a smile. Do you love this one? They might do this. Oh, that's funny. Why don't you laugh? <laughs> I actually heard a comedian talk about that. All right. So I hope this is a good uh, entry point for you to continue on with your art journaling. I would love to see what you're doing. So make sure and post it down below and let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you back here in a little bit. So our assignment today is to think about what we're, um, what we're eating, you know, just in general, um, and really take in this, use your senses with your eating. Just choose one, one meal, right? Uh, number two, um, some sort of exercise, even if you're just going outside, maybe walking to your mailbox. And then number three, find a moment and try to laugh today. All right, I'll see you back here soon. Hi there. All right, let's continue on with those de 10 daily habits that help create a, um, a beautiful writing and creative artist art journaling uh, practice. So I won't go through all of them in detail. I'm just going to highlight a few of them, which I'm going to expound on a little more in our class together. But I wanted to at least hit each one of them for all of us that want to make sure. Yes, you said 10, Robin. Give us 10. <laughs> Okay, so number four is to read. And I will say, um, for me, oh my goodness, this is something that I have gotten away from 100%. I, I do a lot of reading. I won't say that I don't read, but I don't read fiction as much as I want to. I don't know if maybe because... I read so many nonfiction books, and so you have a practicality with it right away. And with fiction, for the most part, there's a buildup that needs to happen. So I need to figure out a way to add that in, because I do know that especially when you're doing something like writing or art journaling, and you really you know, start to feel like, again, the first week, it'll be really just about understanding just this nuts and bolts of how to put it together. But as you get comfortable with that, I want you to be able to feel like you can take that next step if you aren't normally a writer and really make that a, um, a, a nice, satisfying component in your art journaling practice, right? And so for me, I know that when I'm reading, it helps me kind of piggyback off of something I've read to write about it. And I think that's what those um, quotes in your PDFs should hopefully help with, right? Um, and so I'm also kicking around this idea of perhaps maybe just going like a, a route where I'm listening to books on tape and seeing if that might be the way I can kind of usher myself back into reading. So again, these are all pieces of a puzzle and we're not doing them all perfectly all the time and we're also noticing ways we might have done it in the past that really aren't serving us today and so rather than constantly trying to get back to where we were let's honor where we are now right 
All right, so number four is read. Number five, uh, the author talks about what we call cross-fertilize. And I love this because I really do believe this is key to um, really sticking with art journaling. Because even if you don't, at the end of this class, do it every single day, to just know that this is something you can turn to and there might even be times that you maybe sit down for a day and create four or five pages of your art journal because you just feel that burst of inspiration and that's great too. But here's what she says about cross-fertilize. Cross Experience another art form, music, photography, dance, painting, sculpture, film, theater. Keep open books of art in your writing space, a basket full of postcard art to leaf through. If music distracts you while you write, listen at other times where you can absorb the music and it's not just background sound. Visit a museum, walk in a sculpture garden, let other art evoke your own. And I, I love it. I know, I know firsthand that that has been something that I have loved um, just playing around with different things. I um, sometimes I'll sew. Um, and it might just be a quick project, you know, something that's done in 30 minutes, because I am a fan of the quick project. I'm just going to put that out there. And so to have something at the end of 30 minutes that I is very tangible and just satisfying to look at, aesthetically pleasing, I'm just all about it. So number six is practice spirituality. So take time every day or several times a day to consciously go to that place you name sacred through prayer, meditation, or simply being mindful and present in the present. And make time for whatever you do that keeps you in touch with your spiritual self. Now here again, this art journaling experience could potentially be something that you consider sacred or you consider um, uh, meditative or you know spiritual. Um, I know for me, um, it plays two roles. Sometimes it's just about I haven't been able to create in a while, so it allows me to sit down and do something beautiful and creative quickly. And other times, if I'm feeling like I'm struggling uh, with, a, with a, a problem that I'm trying to find a solution for, it kind of helps me to loosen um, my psyche a little bit. Because sometimes when you just hold on to a problem so hard, it kind of like you, I'm, I know I'm probably not explaining it right, but you probably understand what I'm talking about. Like you can't even see an answer and then someone will just say something and you'll go, wait, what? Of course, you know? And so I think sometimes if you don't have that person to necessarily say that to, maybe it's a personal matter you don't want to speak about, art journaling I have found has been very useful to do that. So again, this is something that maybe you won't notice in the first couple weeks that you're doing that, but as you go along, just want to give you the invitation to look and see if you're finding that to be true, right? And maybe that those, um, I don't know, the things that you want to kind of wrestle with start to show up on the page. And interestingly enough, we'll start to even synchronize with not only the pictures, but with the journal, um, sorry, with the, um, with the quotes as well, which that is phenomenal. And please share that with me when that happens. All right, so here's number seven, pay attention. Notice the quality of light, the heft of air, color of sky, faces, clouds, flowers, garbage, graffiti, all of it. Slow down and pay attention. Stop during your walks, examine a leaf, um, read the writing in shop windows, observe people on a bus, the bus driver, the stink of the bus exhaust. Um, yeah, it, you know, and the thing is, going back to this doesn't have to be you can't work and all you're doing is paying attention, but just as we sat and laughed, just taking a few moments and just noticing what's going on around you. Noticing if, for example, you're outside, are the birds singing? I've had these really, I think they're wondrous experiences. I don't know if you ever, if it has happened to you. As you can tell, I love birds. <laughs> this uh, backdrop is inspired by a store. I, I live in, in, um, in, Arizona. So there's these cute little shops in the little towns. And I went to a town in Prescott and the, the boutique had a, a wall of birds. And I, for a while, was just so obsessed with it. Like, I want to be a bird watcher. I want to 
<laughs> I want to get binoculars. I want to, and, and in the area that I live in, um, there are a lot of different species of birds. And so I went so far as to like find, find this fabric and put it up and just I just really am very inspired by the colors and that sort of thing and so I remember one time I was going for a walk and all of a sudden a bird was flying and it just kind of stopped in front of my face in midair and just flapped its wings it was the most amazing thing and you know how when something's happening you're like looking around to see if somebody else is noticing it so once I got out of that and I just let it be for me, it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. Um, and so that's what I would invite you to. Just find something, a few moments where I'm, you know, even if you just don't have that much time, just put a timer on your phone and just go for the next few minutes. I'm just going to listen to the sounds around me. And I think even that allows you to go more inward with this art journaling practice. Okay, so there's three more. Uh, give back, do something good or kind for someone. Number nine is connect with another writer. Well, that's us right here. But if you're going along with the, uh, with this um, with this class with a friend, that's even more amazing. And I hope that you consider doing that. And then number ten is to write. Sometime, someplace, every day honor that part in you that wants to express yourself. And I love that because so many times, again, going back to this, um, people get hung up on these titles. I'm an artist, I'm a writer. Guess what? Everybody wants to express themselves. Everybody wants to be heard and understood. And so your art journal can be that place where you can hear your own thoughts. You know, there is a, a famous quote that talks about, I, if I want to know what it is that I'm thinking, I need to write it down. <laughs> and I love that because it's true. There are times where you, I've noticed, I've had aha moments that come through the pen that I would have never had just sitting down going, what's wrong with you? What's going on with you right now? So anyway, those are the 10 daily habits. I would love to hear down below which ones you really had like a ha aha moment around or something that you want to consider trying. And um, yeah, I will see you back here in a little while. Thanks for stopping in.